Hi, I'm Professor Steve Rowe. I'm a real paleontologist, and you're watching Real Paleontology. I like to think of it as paleontology for grown-ups. And today, we're going to be focusing on birds. Big, scary birds. These are Haas Eagle, aka Harpagornis, the giant eagle of New Zealand, and two other lesser-known giants, Gaff's Eagle from Australia and Suarez's Eagle from Cuba. Now, the main talking point will be Haas Eagle, not only because it's by far the best known, but because we have way more information available on this species, and it's been widely touted as the biggest, baddest eagle ever. But in recent times, a couple of serious new contenders have arisen, and I'm aiming to answer whether Haas Eagle remains the biggest and baddest, and I'll try to answer another question. Was it the ugliest eagle ever? A brief introduction to the players here first. The New Zealand giant, Haas Eagle, was originally described as Harpagornis morii in 1871, but it's since been determined that it is closely and somewhat surprisingly related to Australia's little eagle of the genus Hieratus. So it is now formally known as Hieratus morii. It persisted in New Zealand until agonisingly recently, perhaps within the last 500 years or so, and it's known from complete or very near complete skeletons. Gaff's eagle, a very new kid on the block, was described here by Ellen Mather and colleagues just last year. It was formerly named Dinoatus gaffi. It is known mostly from material found in South Australia, but also isolated elements from other locations in Southern Australia. Putting the pieces together, we can get a pretty good idea of what this bird looked like, although some important elements, particularly the beak, remain unknown. This was an Ice Age species, but the sites it's been recovered from lack secure dating. Now, Suarez's eagle here was described in 2002 by Arundondo and Arundondo. It's known from very scant material, a complete femur or upper leg bone, and a few other bits and pieces. This species is thought to have gone extinct within the last 10,000 years or so. So, on to our first question. Which of these three was the biggest? Well, like I said up front, certainly Haas Eagle is commonly referred to as the largest eagle ever. Probably the most accurate predictions based on measurements from a lower leg bone, the tibiotarsus, put its maximum weight at around 14 and a half kilos, way bigger than the largest living eagle, such as the harpy of South America, which top out at around nine kilos or so. This maximum size estimate comes from what is presumably a very large female, as in true eagles, females are typically much larger than males. For Gaff's eagle, using the same metrics as for Haas eagle, we get a weight of about 12.3 kilograms. For the Suarez's eagle, a weight of around 13.6 kilos is tossed around on the internet, but I've not been able to determine which method was used to arrive at this figure. But in this pic here, you can see the upper leg bone or femur juxtaposed to that of a Haas eagle. There's no obvious difference in size, but then we don't know whether the Haas eagle specimen is from a large or small individual. So, a couple of points to consider here. Most importantly, the weight estimates for both Gaff's eagle and the giant Cuban eagle are both based on measurements from single specimens. Haas eagle, on the other hand, is known from more than 60 individuals collected from at least 40 different sites including a bunch of near-complete specimens. Now, based on data provided in this exhaustive treatment by Richard Holdaway, the average minimum circumference of the femur in Haas Eagle is around 62.5 millimetres. The same measurement for the single specimen of Gaff's Eagle is 64 millimetres. Playing it by the numbers, of course, the chances that this single specimen of Gaff's Eagle was the largest of its kind are vanishingly small, and the chances that it was near average size are very high. And of course, we don't know whether this specimen was male or female. If it was a male, then females would almost certainly have grown considerably larger. Bottom line is that it's pretty much a statistical certainty that the maximum size of Gaff's eagle was well above 12.3 kilograms. And I don't think anyone is going to fall out of their chair if a specimen was found that was significantly larger 
than the 14.5 kilo maximum of Haas Eagle. Obviously, we have even less data available for the giant Cuban Eagle, but the same basic argument applies. In short, although I reckon we can definitely say that the largest known eagle specimens in the world belong to Haas Eagle, I think that the claim that it is the largest species must at least be heavily qualified. Personally, I would say that it is one of the three largest known eagles, but until considerably more specimens of both the Australian and Cuban species are found, a question mark will hang over which of the three was the biggest. Now on to the more interesting question of which was the baddest eagle ever. And again, we have a lot more to draw on here for Haas Eagle than for the other two. We absolutely know for sure that Haas Eagle was a card-carrying kick-ass predator. The impressions of its talons have been found deeply inserted into the pelvis of a giant flightless bird, a moa. There were a dozen or more species of moa of varying sizes, but the largest of these grew to be well over 200 kilograms in weight. It's unlikely that Haas Eagle hit targets this big on a regular basis, but even taking down a bird half that size is an extraordinary accomplishment for a 15 kilo eagle. And there's no doubt that they did. Of course, as is often and sensationally noted in discourse over Haas Eagle, humans fall well within the size range of its potential prey. There's no hard evidence to suggest that this actually happened, but then to this giant raptor, a human may have just been another big biped, and it's definitely possible that the early Maori may have occasionally fallen prey to a 15 kilo ball of feathered fury from the sky. At any rate, there's absolutely no doubt that Hearth Eagle was superbly adapted to take down particularly big prey. Eagles generally kill prey with their talons, and the relative size of their talons and feet gives a good indication of the size of the prey that they're typically targeting. Just as the strength of the bite is a pretty good indicator of the size of prey that mammalian predators are likely to be aiming at, as I discussed in this earlier video. And the feet and talons of Haas Eagle were huge, even for its size. Now on the subject of talons, in this 2021 study led by Annika van Hetteren and co-authored by myself and other folks from my lab, we ran analyses on the shape and biomechanics of the talon of Haas Eagle, comparing it to those of other raptors. As I've mentioned in some previous episodes, animal features often change shape as they get bigger, even if they're living the same lifestyles and performing the same tasks. We pretty much expected something like this to be apparent with the talons of Haas Eagle. That is, that their enormous talons would be a different shape to those of lesser raptors. We were wrong. We found that both the shape and the biomechanical performance of the talons were pretty much constant, no matter the size of the eagle. But we also found that different groups of birds of prey do have different shaped talons that work differently in a biomechanical context. Not totally surprising because some raptors, such as falcons, generally kill prey with their beaks and not their talons. Interestingly though, we found that the same could not be said for the Haas eagle's head and beak. These actually turned out to be much more vulture-like than eagle-like. In particular, its biomechanical performance was more like that of a condor than an eagle. How are we to interpret this? Well, the feeding behaviour of vultures falls into three main categories. Rippers, which feed primarily on the tough skin and hide of a carcass. Gulpers, which feed mostly on the softer internal viscera. And scrapers, which feed primarily on the leftover smaller scraps. In terms of biomechanics, both the condor and Haas eagle performed particularly well in simulations where the animal bit into the flesh of a carcass and pulled its head back. Basically, this means that the Haas eagle was a gulper, like the condor, which is known to specialise in removing soft internal organs. Incidentally, the viscera, such as the heart, lungs and liver, are particularly high in nutrients, so it makes sense to go for these first. The nostrils of Haas eagle also appear to have been more vulture-like, and adapted to reduce the likelihood of being clogged up when the bird jammed its head into its prey's guts. 
Now, what do we know about how the giant Australian or Cuban eagles operated? Well, a first best guess would be that they likely relied on their talons to do most of the work too. And from the few talons preserved, it certainly appears that these two species had relatively smaller talons than their Kiwi cousin. Mather and colleagues note that the talons of Gaff's eagles were not much larger than those of Australia's biggest living eagle, the wedge-tailed eagle. But they also note that the talons of Gaff's eagle were differently shaped and more robust, suggesting that they likely went for larger prey. The fact that they appear to be a different shape is particularly interesting because we know from our analyses that for other eagle species, there is little difference in talent shape. This suggests that Gaff's eagle might have been doing something in a different way. And of course, we simply don't know the shape of the beak of the Australian bird, and we know absolutely nothing about the entire head of the Cuban eagle. It's certainly possible that either of these two species could have relied more heavily on their beaks to kill prey than on their talents. Nonetheless, my call here is that on the balance of probabilities, Haas eagle was likely better adapted to take down relatively large prey than either of the other two contenders here. In short, it was probably the baddest. Although we can't be definitive on this until we have a load more information on the size and shape of the big Australian and Cuban eagles' beaks and feet. So now on to our third and final question. Which of these three big birds was the ugliest? Well, in our 2021 paper, we proposed that the Haas eagle's head wasn't just shaped more like a condor's and used in the same way as a gulping vulture does, i.e. to dig deep into the innards of big animals and extract the nutrient-rich viscera. It was probably featherless too, for the same reason that vultures have bald heads, so that they don't have to constantly clean blood and guts off their heads and faces. And we believe there is some archaeological evidence to support this. This rock painting from a place called the Cave of the Eagle in New Zealand's South Island certainly appears to show an eagle with a dark body and a bald head. So I think the evidence supports the proposition that Haas eagle had a bald, generally vulture-like head. And don't get me wrong, I love vultures, but to most people, they ain't pretty. It's no accident that various eagle species have been adopted as national or royal symbols, but vultures, not so much. So to wind up here, I think the claim that New Zealand's awesome giant eagle was the biggest ever is one that needs to be heavily qualified. I think that the proposition that it was the baddest of the three known giants is on firmer footing, but it can't be totally verified until we find the fossil heads of the other two contenders. Pretty much the same can be said regarding the question of which was the ugliest. Lastly, just to allay any concerns that my Kiwi friends have that I might be biased on this issue, um, I'd like to point out, I went to the trouble of having a Haas eagle skull carved out of ebony some years ago. I like to wear it around my neck sometimes. I love this bird. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please like and subscribe. I'll be posting another shortly.